today i am going to talk about the introduction of queen theory so that will this will be the list of content that i am going to cover today so first of all the introduction of the queen theory queen theory also known as the science of waiting lines it, that is a branch of applied mathematics and operation research that studies the behavior of queues and the waiting lines it provides the mathematical models to analyze and optimize the performance of the systems involving the waiting lines such as the service facilities telecommunication uh, networks transportation systems customer service centers etc queen theory is essential in a various uh, fields uh, for improving the efficiency and reducing the wait times and enhancing the customer satisfaction uh, especially in the uh, if you just see uh, in the hospitals and uh, telecom companies uh, where we need a, uh, we need uh, a lot of the methods to reduce the waiting time of the customers uh, so we can quickly provide them the <coughs> uh, services so who invented the queen theory so erlang erlang uh, was a danish mathematician engineer and statistician who created the invention of queen theory uh, he had done a ground breaking work in the early, early 20th century uh, in the field of the tele, uh, telecommunications uh, he uh, developed the erlang units a uh, dimension less units of the communication uh, telecommunication traffic intensity which uh, became a fundamental in the queen theory and the network uh, traffic analysis during the uh, second world war so origin of the queen theory arise uh, i discussed earlier by the erlang uh, who uh, research at the telecom uh, telephone exchange in the early 90s uh, Erlang's aim uh, was to manage the uh, growing telecommunications uh, uh, traffic effi uh, efficiently uh, and the optimize the performance of telephone networks. His work led uh, to the fun, uh, foundation of the mathematical analysis of waiting lines and the development queen models to address the real life problems. Uh, so, what is the fundamental of the queen theory that we have discussed uh, we need uh, that we need to discuss uh, queen theory studies be, uh, the behavior of the queues and the waiting lines in the system with limited resources key components of a queen systems includes the arrival that is uh, known as the rate uh, at which uh, customers arrive service facilities the capacity of the uh, servers customers and the waiting line that is known as the queue and the service mechanism that is known as the process of the service customers so important terminologies are there in the queuing theory that includes the arrival rates that we usually denote by the lambda service rate that uh, we usually denote by the mu q uh, length that is denoted by the l and the q discipline that is known as the role of serving uh, customers and the utilization that we denoted by the row all right so that is the at the in the picture also as we can see uh, we have the customers that are, are, arriving, are arriving so that is called as like the arrival time distribution or calling the population it may be finite or infinite so we have the queue capacity uh, of the queue that can be finite or infin infinite and on the basis of that we have the queue discipline here after that uh, there another segment is there that is called as like the service uh, number of servers, uh, maybe we have one or more than one servers. On the basis of that, we have the different models uh, of queuing theory in the queuing theory. Uh, so after that, next thing is that the applications of the queuing theory. Queuing theory can be applied in several uh, domains, such as telecommunications networks, uh, where we just organize the call routings and the network capacity planning. It is. It will be very um, uh, important at that time and transportation systems so to manage the traffic flow uh, and scheduling the capacity and to uh, optimize the capacity of the uh, roads in the city so at that time it could be very uh, uh, efficient 
efficient. Uh, so after that, that is your third one is the health uh, care facilities. So appointment, uh, scheduling, scheduling uh, the resources allocation and patients flow management. So at that time, uh, QN models are much uh, uh, essential. So after that, we had retail stores to check out the line management, staffing decisions, and the inventory control. At that time, we need the queen models. In the customer service centers, uh, um, especially in the call centers uh, and service level agreements uh, and the performance uh, valuation, we need the queen theory. So we have the different type of queen models uh, here. In that one, first uh, one is known as the MM1 uh, model. That is the one of the most simplest and most widely used queen model that representing the single server queue with the position arrival and the exponentially distributed service times. That means the service times that uh, are give, provided to the each customers in a queue that will be uh, distributed uh, by the exponential distributions and the arrival of the people in the queue is based on the portion distribution. So after that, we have the uh, another models also there. We have several models in the queen theory that includes the MMC multiple server uh, queue model and MG1 general service time uh, distribution and more complex models are specific uh, for the specific applications we are having. So now the case studies are that uh, case study illustrate the practical applications of the queuing theory in a specific scenario of the scenario or industry. And uh, in that one, we can analyze the problem identified based on the identifying the relevant queuing models, collected uh, data, and propose the solution based on the queuing theory principles. After that, we can uh, discuss the impact of the implementing uh, queuing theory solutions on the system performance and the customer satisfactions. So uh, again, we have several changes and uh, challenges and the limitations in our uh, queen models. First one is the simplifying the assumptions. So uh, many queen models uh, rely on the sim uh, simplify assumptions that may not always hold true in the real world problem. All right. So uh, that is one of the challenge that we need to, we have to face every time. Second is the complex system modeling. The complex systems uh, accurately can be challenging due to the dynamic and the unpredictable factors. That may be one cause. And third one is the sensitivity uh, to changes. So queen models are sensitive to uh, changes in the system parameters and a small deviation can lead to significant difference in prediction that we should uh, understand. So what are the future uh, directions that we have and where we can use uh, QN models? So integration with the advanced technology. So our QN models integrate with the advanced technologies such as the artificial intelligence and machine learning for dynamic queue management. Second would be uh, application in dynamic and unpredictable environments. So our queen model are designed for dynamic and unpredictable uh, environments such as the cloud computing and the IoT network. So third one will be addressing the scalability and the efficiency challenges. Our innovative uh, queen strategy and the algorithms address scalability and the efficiency challenges in the modern systems. So on the basis of uh, Queen models, we have few references. Uh, so I uh, showed three books in the references that we can uh, refer for the further informations. Thank you so much.